Now, Tim, I have many gifts and many, many talents. However, finance, anything to do with money is not my skill. When I'm chairing a church council, don't tell anyone, I look at it and I'm like, this is like Chinese to me. And I ask the treasurer, are we broke? Yes or no? <laughs> are we broke? Well, first of all, that's a very good question to ask the church treasurer. Um, and in fact, the other simple question to ask that, that I'm sure you would understand because yes, you do have lots of talents and skills. Just simply ask, how much money have we got in the bank? And how much money have we got at the Central Finance Board? And just understand, because it's very easy to talk in technical terms about reserves and accruals and fixed assets. And <laughs> nobody wants to know anything about that. But the interesting question is, how much money is in the bank? How, how much money have we got to spend? Because that's really where it just sits in reserves and, and sits not, not being used if we're not careful. And people give money to the church to be used. They don't give it to sit in the bank. So we need to find imaginative ways to use the money we've got. And quite often, I don't know much about finances, but I do know that my £20 now is not worth the same as it was in 1804. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you gave a really challenging address, sermon, speech, to <laughs> conference about some of the real issues that we're facing as a connection financially and what we can do as churches and as circuits to help that. What was, what was that plea, that call to arms? I think the plea is simply this, that, that actually we, we are part of a very wealthy church. And sometimes people think that that wealth sits in bank accounts that are controlled by the connectional team in London. And the fact is that that's not the case. For a number of years, we've been running down to the central connectional funds. But when we look at what sits at the Central Finance Board in their accounts, when we make some projections about what is also sitting in HSBC and the Co-op Bank and the other places that people keep money, we understand that there's something in the order of £300 million sitting in cash. Mm. Now, that, that is a figure that's far too big for anyone really to understand. It's a huge sum of money, £300 million. What does that buy? Well, it's a huge amount. Uh, one, house <laughs> one house in Jersey. One house in Jersey. Just okay. kidding, just kidding. <laughs> well, I, I did make a suggestion a couple of years ago that it would make a very nice Caribbean retreat island. Seconded. Uh, we, 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 could, we could buy that, but sadly uh, the, the president that year closed me down before I could, I could put that to the vote. But 300 million is an absurd amount of money. It is an absurd amount of money. Uh, and actually what we need to do is to invest in the future mission of the church by actually going out and finding imaginative ways in which we, we can spend that money. But also at the moment, I have to say that, that, that we also do have a, a problem uh, funding our historic debt on our pension funds, mm. our minister's pension fund in particular, but also we have a, a scheme for, for, for lay staff. Uh, and we need to, to find uh, another huge sum, £45 million, pounds, uh, that we can, just, we can give as an assurance to the trustees of that fund so that they, the trustees can know that, uh, that the pensions can be paid in future over the next 50, 60 years as, as they fall due and as people retire. So what we've been asking uh, the Methodist people to do is to look carefully at the money which is sitting in their reserves mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and consider how generously they can give to fund that hole in our pensions. Um, and overall it means something like 15% of that £300 million needs to be given. Mm -hmm. If you put it like that, it doesn't seem quite so yeah, much. Yeah. But, but a lot of this money sits with a few churches. And I, I'm sure people will be out there saying, well, my church hasn't got any money. My church is broke. My ch and, and a lot of people say that. Yeah. But if that's the case, then who, who has got it? Mm. Somebody else has got it. Mm. And, and we want to appeal to people's generosity. Those who, who are sitting on maybe 100,000, maybe one and a half million. There are, there are those out there that are sitting on those kind of sums of money particularly in circuits, right? Um, um, maybe where they've, where they've sold a property and they need to, need to think seriously about how they might give that money uh, in, into a reserve so that we can ensure that our pensions are paid in the future. So Marjorie, who's in, who's in the pew, she's heard your call and your, your plea and, Hello, the, Marjorie. <laughs> and the difficulty. How, how can somebody like Marjorie help? What can we do? What is... Like, do, do we get our checkbooks out and who do we write it to? Not, not the Reverend Tim Swindell. <laughs> but how do we do that? What's the, ne what's the next step? What... 
what happens? Yeah, you, know, you know, I suspect that uh, in our local churches, uh, from, from the point of view of, of money just coming in, we, we're going to need that collection to recover. Mm. Uh, that the, 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 the general weekly and monthly giving, we need that to recover just to cover things like stipends and, yeah. and normal yeah. um, uh, assessments which are made. And so I would encourage you to go back and, and maybe think about um, the, the money which you've saved over the last year um, from, from being at home. Certainly uh, I haven't had community costs, so if anything I'm better off. Some people aren't, they've lost their jobs. We're all in different positions. But if, if we are able to think about... And uh, pray the, about... Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, pray about our own financial situations and whether we can give more to, to bolster the current situation. But really what I'm looking at is, is that money that's just sitting there uh, in, in our reserves doing, doing nothing and, and how we can release that for the work of the kingdom. So Marjorie could ask the treasurer, Uncle Brian, or whoever the tri treasurer is, can I see how much have we got in our reserves? She could ask that question at the church council or the circuit meeting. Absolutely. Mm, okay. Or, or if the word reserves is a little bit, I'm not really sure what reserves are, just ask how much money have we got? Yeah. How much cash is in the bank? How, yeah. how much cash is in the kitty? In? <laughs> yes. Yeah. How much is in the piggy bank? Yes, there we go. Yeah. Where's the hammer? <laughs> yeah. If, if, if the crunch really came, what have we got? What are we sitting on? Well, the, 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 the phrase I used in past years was, what, what have we been holding on to for a rainy day? Yes, yeah. You know, there's the rainy day reserve. Now, for the last 16 months, it's been raining, raining hard. Cats and dogs. Oh, dear, it's been pouring. Elephants. <laughs> we, we, we've had all these problems over the last period. If we haven't been using our reserves, I've just said, what are we waiting for? And I've just been saying, you know, what are we waiting for? A plague of locusts? You know, mm. We need to, we need to have been spending our reserves. Yeah. The time is now. If we haven't been raiding our reserves, then actually we we should really think ourselves yeah. as being well off. Tim, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your help, and thank you for everything that you do as a treasurer. From somebody like me who just doesn't understand it, I really appreciate everything you do. Don't do yourself down. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Peter.